quit it. I know I have sensitive armpits. <laughs> hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Pretty fancy editing there. All right, for all of you that have been following along with the channel for a while now, or maybe just recently, you might be wondering, what the f is that thing? So today, I'm gonna tell you what it is, what it does, why I got it, and why I really don't use it that much. God, there's wind your balls out there. All right, here it is. This is the XR4000 version B. These things aren't even out to the public yet, but uh, I know a guy uh, who knows some other guy. They got me one right off the boat. You know what I'm talking about. Actually, this is the Bally Industrial SD255 dual drum sander. Quality stuff. Didn't even dent it. Now this unit will run you right around $3,500. I actually picked this thing up from a friend for free. He used it for a job and he didn't need it anymore and he wanted it out of the shop. So he actually gave it to me and I try to do electrical work for him from time to time to try to help kind of pay back. Now this was gonna be my solution to getting rid of dross faster on my CNC projects, kind of help streamline the CNC work a little bit and just become a little bit more efficient. All right, one thing I like to do here with everything in the shop, as you might've noticed, is I like to put casters on everything. I don't have a very large space in here. So it allows me to wheel the stuff out in the middle of the garage when I'm using it. I could also do a little bit of cleaning and I could wheel it right back. It makes it a lot easier to work in a smaller space like this. Now this is a 240 volt single phase unit. So I am able to use this right here at home in my garage. This thing only requires a 20 amp circuit. So it really does not pull a lot of juice. On this dual drum sander, the first thing we have here is the in-feed belt. So you're gonna put your project here on the belt and then it's gonna feed it into the machine. Once it gets into the machine, right here, we've got our dual drum sanders. Uh, I like to keep a heavier grit on the front drum and a finer grit on the back drum. Kind of self-explanatory, uh, take off the heavy stuff with the rougher grit and give a smoother finish with the finer grit. Once you send the material through, basically you just walk around the back, wait for it to come out and grab it. And if it needs a little bit more sanding, you come around and you run it back through again. It's just a load of fun. Hey, hello. <laughs> All right, here is the height adjustment for this machine. Basically, you crank it one way or the other to raise or lower the feed belt. And then you can see right here, you've got an indicator for the height on your feed belt. Usually I use that to just kind of get me in the ballpark of where I need to be, and then I kind of fine tune it. All right, here are the controls. Pretty easy to understand. You got your on button, your stop or your e-stop, and then you've got your speed dial for your in-feed belt, and you've got the on-off switch for your in-feed belt right here. And like I said, this is just a 240 volt, 20 amp circuit that I use to power this thing. It doesn't really take a whole lot. Now I already have a little uh, monogram that I'm cutting for a customer, so we'll go ahead and get that thing cut, and we'll try this thing out. Sometimes I need to just slow down. Okay, let's hop on Fusion 360 for like 15 seconds. I'm not gonna go over any of the CAD stuff. I literally am just gonna show you what it is that we're cutting and then we're gonna get started. Here it is. We got an eagle, some trees, and a wolf. Very uh, patriotic. And that is it. Now, this customer that requested this monogram is going to hang this in his bathroom. Nothing more patriotic than staring at an eagle and a wolf while you're taking a shit. All right, speaking of patriotic, there's nothing more patriotic than women and beer. So let's go ahead and get that Keystone girl out here. Hey, Keystone girl! Are you an idiot? Oh my God, you are getting good. Yeah, here you go. Wow, oh, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, what do you think about putting one of these eagles up in our bathroom? Yeah, not gonna happen. Well, it's worth a try. You wanna stick around and help me with this cut? Yeah, help you. What do you need me to do? All I need you to do is hit the start button. Pretty easy. Sounds like it. Am I doing this right? Oh, you're doing great, honey. I mean, that is perfect. Yep. Yeah, you're doing good. Mm -hmm.
stupid. All right, now that we got this uh, wolf eagle cut, I wanna show you exactly what I'm talking about with the dross and what exactly it is that we're trying to remove using that machine. Now, like you may have seen in my previous videos, the way I usually do this is I use this four inch cold chisel. I kind of knock off the big stuff and then I use this two inch Milwaukee die grinder and I basically go around every single one of the cuts and clean up all those edges. It can be a little bit time consuming, but in my opinion, this thing does the best job cleaning up those edges. So I will leave Amazon associate links for this Milwaukee two inch die grinder and I'll leave links for the sanding discs as well. Let's take a closer look here at that dross that I'm talking about. You can see here all along the edges, all that slag buildup. That's basically just that cut blowing through. You can see there's some bigger chunks like right here. Now I could take that cold chisel and that'll pop right off. But there are spots like this where you have a consistent serrated looking edge all the way around that cut. Now I can run my finger across it, it's not gonna cut me. But it's not something that I wanna hand the customer looking like that. I wanna clean them up and uh, get it nice and smooth. All right, now since the Keystone girl did such a great job hitting that start button, I'm gonna have her uh, come out again, give me a hand running this thing through the machine. Probably have her hit the start button on this machine as well. So enough fiddle f***ing around. Let's see what this thing can do. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and run the Wolf Eagle through the machine, see how it does. Now it's not a bad idea to wear some gloves when you're doing this because that material can get pretty hot. Ooh, hot. <laughs> All right, Keystone girl, why don't you go ahead and hit that start button, hit the in-feed belt, see what this thing can do. Try to get a better view. What? Uh, nothing. Subscribe. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this eagle. I ran this thing through that dual sander probably 10 times, which took me about 15 minutes. Now, if I would have used the Milwaukee die grinder, I probably would have had about the same amount of time into it. And even after using the dual sander, I still have to go back with the die grinder and, and hit the edges. Now, that sander gets 90% of the dross. It knocks it way down almost where it's completely flush. You could see in these sections right here that it's completely sanded down, um, pretty consistent, but then right next to it, it hasn't been touched at all by the sander. So it can be very inconsistent when I run a piece through. Sometimes it hits it, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why that happens, but I still have to go through and hit all these edges, but this thing does save some time. If I was running a lot of cuts through this thing, I may use it, uh, but most of the time I don't. All right, that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. A big thanks to the Keystone Girl for all of her help today out in the shop here. Make sure you give her some compliments down there in the comments. Now you don't need to do that for me because I just don't give a f Anyways, the point of today's video was to give you some information on maybe another option for removing dross from your CNC work. Now for the amount of money that this thing costs, to me it just isn't worth it. I find that the two inch die grinder does a pretty good job and for me doing my day to day stuff or maybe a couple things on the weekends here and there, that's what works best for me. But I do use this from time to time when I'm running like 10 signs in a day or a weekend, I will use this machine. So it is a nice machine to have around the shop, but there's probably better tools to invest that money in to help your shop run more efficiently. Anyways, if you like this video or maybe you just want to see the Keystone Girl and you think I'm an idiot, either way, hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. First time I get over to this. Oh my God, that's my face. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know, I gotta check. Sometimes <laughs> I just don't know. When he thinks this is gonna slip out. Yeah, you don't want that happening. Oh, girls call me like crazy. They will. Yeah. Maybe I will undo it. <laughs> you wanna stick around and help me work on some of these cuts? Sure, yeah, I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what you wanted. Sure, yeah, I'll help you. Yeah.
Yeah, she kind of scared me right there. <laughs> what do you got two beers for? For you. I'm gonna drink both of them? No, I'm gonna be just drinking one. That wasn't part of the script. Why, did, why was the one sitting right there though? That was for after I drank the first one, I was gonna have another. Oh. So I had another one lined up for myself. Oh, we got more keystone in there. I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> <laughs> This is she.